Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and today we have a pretty goddamn epic battle. The elves and dwarves have come together to defeat the forces of evil, and much like the elves and dwarves, I am joined by my arch rival, Pixelated Apollo. Hello. You know, every once in a while, you know, there's an external force, and we have to come together and look past our differences and make a video. So it's, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, I know we haven't done one of these in a long, long time. And we, you know, what better battle to do than a four verse three on the city of Umber that looks absolutely spectacular. It looks amazing. This is one of my favorite custom maps. It's really impressive what they've been able to, to make in Rise of Mordor. Yeah, and just the scale of it as well is pretty crazy. There's so many little different alleyways that soldiers can get through. So you don't just end up in that situation where there's like, you're just like going through one choke point. There's plenty of opportunities for the attackers to exploit pathways, streets, and all that lovely stuff. So do you want to dive in and take a look at maybe some of the forces that we've got today? Yeah, let's let's do it. Do you want to you wanna do the attackers? I'll do defenders. Yeah, let's do it. So on the attacking side, on the far left-hand side of the main wall, we do have the forces of Isengard coming. One of the oldest factions in the game, but still one of the best-looking ones, in my opinion. So oh, yeah. Warwick warriors are going to be making up the majority of the front line, just kind of holding back the standard sword and board infantry, ready to throw their lives away at a whim. They're also pushing up the uh, siege towers. We've also got more Uruk infantry. So just basically a ton of that heavy infantry. In the center of their battle line, though, we do have a unit of white hand sappers. And these guys, much like they do at the Battle of Helm's Deep, come in and just absolutely blow everything up. So they're a great unit just to throw against the enemy walls. And if they do work, they can be a bit finicky, a bit weird, a bit dodgy. But when they do dive in, they can just completely clear out a wall and it's, it's basically no more opening up a beautiful breach point to attack him. Behind them, we do also have a force from Dale. So Isengard and Dale are teaming up. And the Night Town Guard looking pretty good on the left-hand side, supported in there by the marksmen of Dale as well. Uh, Dale obviously known for their archers. They also have some bardings, which I believe are the best archers in the game. A very, very deadly unit indeed. Then finally, on the far left-hand side of the attacking force, we have more, I guess, right-hand side of the attacking force. We have more Uruks, and this is kind of the elite part i guess of the isengard army a bunch of uruk pikes along with some white hand stormers and obviously got artillery ranging in there as well looking beautiful as they bombard the streets really quickly before this battle does fully get underway and i'm still doing the intro on the beach we do have some forces of noldrun archers uh which are going to be scattered around on that beach line uh, with Noldra nobles, we have some shipwright nobles, so a lot of the elite infantry. And I believe I also missed one of the elven factions on the attackers. Um, but basically, there's a woodland realm here somewhere. Somewhere. Is there a realm? No, I, I think they're on defense. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, it was uh, well, the Noldra elves, right? Uh, yeah. Imagine being one of the defenders and you see elves and you're like, oh, thank God, reinforcements. Wait a second. Why do they have siege towers? <laughs> Yeah, in the movies of Helm's Deep, you know, the elves weren't coming to save the men of Rohan, they were just here to kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> like, the best power play by Galadriel. The, the elves were just sick of everyone's crap. They're like, you know what? It, everyone's dying. All right, cool. Do you want to quickly... Cause yeah, I'll go super fast. So defending, we've got more of the, uh, the elves. Uh, so it's going to be a little elf on elf action and not in a good way. Uh, and then over kind of on the northern side of the wall left side uh we've got uh this is the woodland realm correct yeah this is the woodland realm elves so they've got their their nice you know archers and infantry like most elven factions do and then kind of more in the center i think we have more woodland elves and yeah, then the and the dwarves as well and the dwarves all the way at the edge here so yeah they're working together very yeah. cool and obviously the dwarves have recently received a massive overhaul to all their units uh, and they just look absolutely spectacular really really nice yeah i i like the uh, the influences the in inspiration by bat you know the uh, the hobbit so it's it's pretty cool yeah the hobbit's not good for a lot of things but you know it does have some you know some good unit design stuff. yeah indeed. indeed so as you can see already we've got some berserkers charging in in the center uh throwing themselves against the hall guardians of the woodland realm but again you know even though they are shock infantry going up against halberds from the front is never normally a great idea so yeah that turns out yeah berserkers are definitely as 
intimidating as they are, they're definitely more like they they're more of a support unit. Like they need help in the front line and then they kind of go around the flank or or support the front line a little later. But yeah, yeah. 100%. if they can like they, they yeah, as you say, they need help because they can't take a lot of missile fire. They need setup. They need infantry to be engaging before they kind of descend in. And as we can see, not liking that engagement, they are going to be pulling back from of there and kind of rethinking what they should be uh, doing. Also, there's not really a lot of archers on the front line, considering we have elves set up. Uh, yeah. Initial wall. There's not a lot of archers hammering the attackers as they come in. Yeah, I think that's a big missed opportunity because you know, knowing Total War, the pathfinding's never the greatest, and sometimes it takes them a little while to get off the walls. So they're just lined up, ready to be shot. And uh, yeah, they they could be racking up some kills. The archers, I see some archers actually shooting at the general, <laughs> the white hand stormers back there. Oh god, yeah, there's a lot of arrow <laughs> fire coming out. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but in the most recent patch uh, that they added in, archers now expend their ammunition extremely quickly. Like mm. an elven unit will fire all his arrows within like four or five minutes, which makes them just so much more valuable in battles and allows them to really rack up kills and then pull out their sword and dive in. Like, look at them, they're already at half ammunition right now. Yeah, I love I love this secondary wall too that they can set up on. That is so cool. It just looks awesome. Yeah, you got what two units of archers up there just firing down and yeah, uh, yeah. That unit of Urukai infantry going down to under 90 men now. They are getting destroyed. That kind of halo oh. shield that Attila units have has now gone and uh, yeah, they're just taking pure. Oh. Oh. That's just a graveyard, jeez. Yeah, that really, really is. Oh, over on the beach side of things though, we do have the Linden Elves engaging. You you know it, the Linden Elves. So yeah. What side is what? But it doesn't look like the Red Elves <laughs> are claiming a, a bit of an, a kind of an advantage in this fight. But more of the Yellow Linden Elves are also arriving, which I just realized doesn't really help out because even though their icon is yellow, their armor is also yellow. So yes. Yellow Linden Elves doesn't help. Yes, yeah, just probably realistically, like there would be a lot of friendly fire. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, we, we have a unit of Elven Archers up on the wall firing down. At How Archers, hell? yeah. Yeah, would they know who to shoot and who not? To shoot? <laughs> they wouldn't. Oh man, Wait, this. I mean, and that's the that that's the reality of civil wars at times. You know, where there's a lot of friendly fire because you don't know, you know, who's who in the heat of the moment. But okay, we need to be wearing like an armband or something, you know, just to show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like even then, like armbands fall off, they get covered with dirt or whatever, and. But yeah, it's this would be the most tragic thing in in lore, you know? Like if this really happened, elves versus elves of the same culture. Yeah, and as you can see, there's not actually really any assault happening on the extreme right of the settlement whatsoever. And there's some uh, there's some iron guard over there, some dwarven units that could definitely be deployed elsewhere. As the forces of Isengard are now pretty much completely inside of the settlement, they're just flooding through yep, that gate. Yep. My God, this is this is like stage one is over. You know, attacking the walls is over. Now they're just you know preparing their army for the next defense layer of defense. There is a little bit of a fight uh, with some Urukai infantry against some hall guards. It looks yeah, like again, Albert's from the front. That's not going to be a good thing. Yeah. If anything, they should probably move up those iconic Urukai pikemen. Oh kind of, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's not really much like, not, there's not really any ammunition really left to, to shoot them if they want to. You know, the archers on the, the extreme left have half ammunition Ooh. at best. So, or you just saw the artillery. Yeah, started. yeah. Selman is set ablaze. Under will be burned down, regardless of the victor today. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, getting the uh, the Dale archers in unmolested is going to be huge, I think, because yep. Dale are known for their archers as much as the elves are. So, able to fire in, take the walls, fire down from the walls, it's going to be absolutely huge. Yeah, I mean, these siege battles are always a battle of attrition. It always seems like at the end of the day, whoever has more ammo ends up winning. So, we'll see uh, how they kind of conserve their ammo and when they use it and... Oh, there we go. I think uh, the attackers are using their ammo on those halberds. 
that we were just watching. Ooh, burrito. And yeah, I mean, that's one of that's one of the faint reasons why defending the walls is actually a really good idea as well, because you have in Rise of Mordor, you have a supply barrel that actually replenishes your ammunition. So combine that with how fast arrows deplete nowadays in the newest patches, then it actually is a really good idea to try and defend them barrels because you can use, you know, multiple, you know, kind of uh, ammunition pools, I guess, to get, you know, a lot of kills. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And those are that's such a cool feature. That is just really awesome. Yeah, I always felt like, you know, because you could do it in the, I think, in the vanilla Attila, you can do it with ships to replenish ammunition, but you can't do it with land units. And I always felt like that there should always be like a Shogun 2S capture point where you go back and get your ammunition, like restock, and then head back out to the battlefield. Because yeah. Why wouldn't the city have, you know, excess supplies of arrows? Yeah, like set up at strategic defensive locations. Yeah, I mean. It's almost like the defenders would prepare for a siege. Yeah. Yes. And look at this. The, the elves are just like pouring in defenders into this blob on the northern side against Isengard. I don't know yeah. if you see this. It's just yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six units. It's kind of yeah. overkill. Yeah, but they are good units as well. So the elves don't have great numbers. There's only, what, 95 of them in a unit, whereas the Uruk-hai have 160, so you can really see they do get outnumbered, and that's probably why they're throwing in as many units, just to stem any bleeding, stop any breaches from happening in that battle line, just because they are so few in number. Obviously, they're elite, but they don't quite have the quality to stand... Oh, sorry, they don't quite have the numbers to, to repel the enemy. Yeah. Let's see, only having them 95 men in a unit, that can be painful. It really, really can be. And then I'm looking over where uh, the elves attacked, and I mean, this is a, a great defensive spot. This little like bridge over the water, and they're gonna be able to hold for a long time. But it looks like the elves on the other side near the um, the lighthouse have kind of fallen back. Yeah, so, they should be like ultra aggressive and just go for it, don't you think? Like try and sandwich them in and uh, yeah, point up and then maybe move into the the main wall defense. Yeah, I would, because look how weak the elves are, the attacking elves. I mean, they could definitely take them on. In worst case, you kill each other's armies and you, you know, you balance it out. But we'll see how that plays out. I think the, the, the defending elves are going to be more passive and they're just kind of holding back the attacking elves. Uh, so their allies' flank is protected while they take on Dale and Isengard. Yeah, I think I think the reason as well that winning so heavily on that bridge was because of them archers with their pinpoint, no friendly fire vision, able to volley him from above, you know, through kind of the piercing armor, and then you know down onto the Noldrin swords of the attackers. Yeah, able to rack up a lot of kills. But then again, I say that the uh, the attacking elves have now done the exact same thing. They've just got a unit up on that wall now, firing down. So they should be able to feasibly get a lot of kills here. Oh yeah, use the defenses against them. And now, hey look, Isengard has sent up some pikemen to deal with the halberds, but they are getting chewed up by the defending archers, so. Nice, how many uh, how many pikes do Isengard have left now? Quite a few, right? They have Lake Town Guard out there, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, they, yeah, I think they brought like four or so. Exactly, I just don't know if there's gonna be enough ammunition to, to really deal with that. Uh, I mean, there's an entire unit of bearable crossbowmen coming up. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they do have quite a lot to still push back the enemy. And uh, oh, we got a breach as well. Sorry, in the breach point over on the second layer wall, we've got a couple units pushing through there, meeting the Erebor halberds. Hmm. There we go. Dwarves are in action here. And Finally, normally they're the first ones to dive in. They're like, let the elves go in first. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Them and uh, their bodies pile up. And more <laughs> yeah. and coming in. Oh, but no, the elves have come in. They're coming in to reinforce the dwarves. Just on the battle of the five armies right here. Yeah. The elves arriving now. The reinforce. Well, they are any spears, and spears aren't exactly a great aggressive force in this game. But all they need to do here is just hold the line, right? They just need to hold this breach point and hopefully take that pound of flesh elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, like, siege battles, they're just battles of attrition, and as defenders, what you're trying to do is get the enemy to exhaust as much of their resources as possible before falling back to, the, you know, the, the last stand area where hopefully you've 
you've done enough where they don't have enough resources to take you out. And there really is a very cool fullback position. If we take a look at it, you can see that they've kind of got that initial ramp up by the walls. There's oh, yeah. a position you can go all the way around right at the back of the, uh, the inner layer. You can go all the way down past that capture point and then end up through the aqueducts isn't coming in from the uh, right hand side. Wow. Go down the main street and then up that little kind of stairways position through the houses. And uh, you can also meet up your soldiers and go kind of from the, the dockyard all the way up and kind of meet up with that rear entrance as well. So there's plenty of places to defend and also to fall back to. That's awesome. That's really cool. And a lot of places for the attackers to use, which is always, you know, having options is always helpful when attacking. Yeah, I mean, exactly. There's what, like, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, choke points on this initial longer outer wall. You know, like having all them options to really stretch for defenders is, is huge. I mean, obviously you have the brute beach assault, you have... Oh, and speaking of which, they have actually gone a bit aggressive, uh, the Linden Elves against the Linden Elves. They have gone quite aggressive. Uh, <laughs> Defending or attack? Oh yeah, I think the defenders, right? Yeah. Yeah, the defenders have thrown out unit of spears and the uh, Nordrian archers who are out of ammunition. Just lobbing them in against the, uh, I mean, their shock infantry. Oh yeah, yeah. Henry, but Against the swords there. Yeah, I think their main objective is probably just to hold them in place so that the, the bridge assault can maybe do a bit more. But saying, speaking of that, the bridge assault is not looking good for the defenders, honestly. They've got, what, two... They're going up against Tunis and Nodrian Nobles, which are Pike slash Halberds. Ooh. Firing in, like, that's scary. Yeah, and they're in a tough situation where it's like, do I fall back or hold? Because if I fall back, the flank of my allies is going to be exposed. So yeah. I feel like they're just kind of like, well, <laughs> this is how it's going to be. <laughs> like, we're just going to hold and die as long as possible. Yeah, and honestly, I think they should just pull back, you know, just kind of like hold, um, hold like a line just a little bit further back, get out of range of them archers. You can then maybe try and outflank elsewhere. Yeah. It yeah. seem like uh, some of the uh, Woodland Realm are coming to reinforce. Yeah, I saw that. They've got some archers nearby. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. I think they need to fall back because the bridge choke point area is only good if you have the better defensive units. And right now they don't. And the attackers are just cleaning them up. So yeah, they should fall back and, like you said, try to flank around in the open spaces and try to get behind those halberd units. Yeah, and there's a lot of open space as they go out. Like, if they just fall back just a tad, you know, to this open courtyard position, then they can then attack them from, like, you know, where the main defense is or come at them at a different angle. You know, it opens up a lot more avenues. But them archers are definitely still taking their, their pounds of flesh on that fight. And, uh, if, I mean, if we take a look at the, the main inner wall again, you can see that Isengard are putting pressure pretty much everywhere along the battle line. However, on the extreme right, it does seem like the dwarves have been able to repel the enemy pretty effectively there's like barely mm. any important bodies there and the, the forces of isengard have completely fallen back yeah the attack over here was pretty light and like you said what attack there was the dwarves uh easily held their own Ooh, do you want to know why that happened look at that unit of crossbows on the wall that were able to shoot them in the back that was such oh. a that is yeah that's that's really smart yeah, because the attackers didn't go for this kind of far extreme right position, there's no way for any of the attackers to get to the crossbows. So they oh, could just yeah. completely knock that down. That's a big and, brain play, yeah. A five head right there. <laughs> yeah, because there's this weird little like wall on the wall. <laughs> there's a wall on the wall. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Access. Yeah. And, I, you know, it almost seems like the attackers are not too worried about it. I mean, sure, they kind of put up a little bit of a fight there, but look, look at all the troops. They, they could send more over there, but they're not. I think they're just going to concentrate their forces on, on the center, you know, northern side and maybe deal with the uh, dwarves a little bit later. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good idea. However, the numbers are starting to look a little bit scary. I mean, honestly, the attackers have 8,000 men to begin with. They're now down to 6,600. The defenders have 4,500 left, and they started off this battle with 5.6. Uh, so, you know, the, the attackers are definitely losing men as they push through this, but that's always going to be the case, all right? They can't exactly expect just to clearly walk through the settlement without too much opposition. Yeah, 
yeah for sure it's it yeah it's always tough attacking but if you can break through and get to their you know push them back to the last stand there's always hope what is it is it the defenders never win is that the saying on the <laughs> yes win? defenders never win yeah that's an old throwback that's that's yeah medieval two style why why did defenders never win in medieval two? It, it they won all the time they did it's just like you'll have someone who only happens to see the attackers win in, in certain videos and they just assume the defenders never won but now now it's the opposite because i do a lot of rome too and now it's the uh, the attackers never win so yeah it's like switched around yeah Speaking of which they are making some pretty good progress on the uh furthest right engagement honestly uh whittling down a lot of these elven forces however the dwarves have now realized that they probably need to send some reinforcements they're shifting over you know uh, halberds over there should hopefully just kind of seal that choke point for a little bit longer and then crossbows are now pulling back from that extreme right as well i mean honestly they, they have the siege equipment outside the settlement they can just go pick that up and they're, go, they're going to pick up that siege equipment right now i think maybe just sending some more over to that extreme left would be a great way especially now the dwarves have fallen back from it oh yeah and maybe that's what they were waiting for i, I mean that's whether this was planned or an accident it should uh it should work out it, it, it's always good to spread out the defenders and and see and and really the question is for the the defenders is how long do we hold here do they give it their all and and try to hold with everything they have or do they eventually fall back uh with some troops that, that's always the question for defenders do we hold to the to the last in the outer walls or do we eventually fall back and i mean it seems like as long as they control these choke points, they're good to go. But you always end up in a, in a position where, you know, if you wait too long, you know, it's going to be too late by that point. Like, say the far left breaks and we get more siege towers here. You can see that battering ram is going to start taking the, the long enemy. trek all the way over. <laughs> yes, it's going to take a long time. But there's nothing there, right? So, you know, I love doing this. I love bringing in the siege equipment a little bit later when the battle's already kind of fully formed and, uh, you know, kind of built up and battle lines have been decided upon because now you bring up these siege towers or you bring up a battering ram and then there's an, another front that the defenders have to try and take care of and they're already kind of being stretched thin so i love it when you know no matter what total war game it is i love it when the attackers kind of just hold back a siege tower or two or hold back a battering ram and then just deploy it a little bit later in the battle yeah I mean, big impact yeah for sure because what happens is like people get used to the normal kind of strategy where it's like all right when battle starts move up siege tower okay siege towers are done and then the defenders stop looking at the siege towers so when you kind of delay it sometimes the defenders won't pay attention and you'll you know get them by surprise and you could say the same thing about the defenders when they sally out cav Usually when you sally out Cav, it's right at the beginning of the battle, but if you wait middle of the battle, you can catch the attackers by surprise. And I don't know, that's why I love siege battles, because they seem like more of a chess game, you know? Where it's it's more it's slower pace, but you gotta make moves that the your opponent won't see. Exactly, you have to think five steps ahead. Right. And we'll see if it does pay off no oh unfortunately the battering ram is no longer being pushed over i guess i felt like <laughs> we, yeah. so we just went on a five minute rant and rave about how awesome this is and he just gave up so i think it would have been awesome and oh finally finally they're taking advantage of that if you look on the left hand side by the bridge look at the walls they're finally taking advantage of that passageway so they can come completely behind and i think they're oh yeah enveloped the uh, bridge defenses already oh yeah yeah yeah. i see okay yeah yeah because they've come down from that little alley or yes that's huge back. huge yeah and this is what we were saying is like when do you fall back you know should they have fallen back a little bit you know like five minutes ago and then this wouldn't have happened so it's really about picking your movement it's yeah that's that's the other thing is like again when you're the defenders you have less money you have less units so when your units fight 
they have to be in a position superior to the attackers almost every time. And when you get outflanked like this and you can't fall back because your troops are cut off, it's a huge loss to the uh, defenders. So this is a huge win for, for Isengard. The dwarves are pumping their little legs though. I'm going to try and get you to hear it as quickly as possible. <laughs> We're natural sprinters, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Up the hill as well, which is not good. Uh, and then more Isengard troops. We've got more infantry rolling up. Yeah, I think they're going to really try and blockade this point, stop any reinforcements from making it through, and then just strangle the uh, the elves on the uh, on the bridge itself. Did the defending elves just kill? Yeah, he just killed the attacking elves' general. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, they broke him through. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They've... Reinforcements are on the way. That's huge. So it seems like both sides got a pretty big victory there. And yeah, totally. Now they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna surround the bridge. Uh, so it's a flank versus flank. Yeah, literally. And uh, their, their numbers are gonna start to dwindle. I mean, there's not really a lot of dwell, dwarves, 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 elves. <laughs> dwarves. Right, yeah, there's not really any elves left. So losing that general is it's pretty big, especially with these reinforcements. They can basically, as you said, turn this flank around on its head. The dwarves have fought their way through as well. The eye and guard charging in to relieve this flank and i think it's looking good for the defenders honestly how how nice to see dwarves just desperately try to save elves exactly if i was there i'd probably you know just <laughs> delay myself just a little bit you know nothing yeah. crazy yeah. like five ten seconds extra maybe a few more elves die you know what's the harm in that? well you know what probably gave them inspiration the fact that they would also kill elves <laughs> that is very true you know kill two birds with one stone yep uh, the rest of the settlement though you, again we do see them uh we do see them on the far right of the settlement we see the force of isengard engaging against the dwarves again and we see them crossbows mounting that wall again mm. ready to, to fire in i should be able to see it in action this time oh yeah dale is pushing hard i mean it's getting it's definitely getting to the point where there's a little bit of a fire under the attackers where they need to get going and push through this yeah totally they need to make a breach point because the thing is as well is as soon as you break through one of these areas you pretty much break through all of them because the defenders have to react to it and normally the re reaction is okay we have to fall back now we you know, you know there's a breach they fall back to the inner you know the inner keep yeah so just it's just all about finding that one weakness and then mm -hmm. exploiting it but nothing yet yeah, the defense does look very strong, and especially now that their forces are probably going to get cleaned up. I mean, I say that again, uh, on the bridge again, Isengard have reinforced with two more units, so... Oh, wow, yeah, look at that. They're going all in, because this is huge. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty, there's what, four more units on that wall as well, including the, uh, the general as well, the White Hand Storm is up there. Going to come down and uh, try and help out with the dwarves firing on that inner wall as well. Punishing them for... Uh, yeah, for this little flank. Looks awesome. I really wish more settlements did have kind of multi-layer walls. Yeah. So cool. It would be cool if, you know, Total War kind of, or CA took the time to kind of balance these maps where you could have a heavily defended multi-walled layer settlement and it adjusts, you know, adjusts the, the, the funds for, for both sides where, you know, the attackers have enough money to deal with the defenses and stuff. Yeah, well, like, obviously this isn't a medieval castle, but many medieval castles, right, were meant to be defended by as few people as possible. Because, right. You know, that would, you know, give them more supplies and, and maybe have to hold out for longer until reinforcement armies arrived and so on. So, yeah, it'd be cool if we ever saw a medieval free or something like that, but they did, you know, really... I mean, they can't do medieval free and not do good sieges, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, well, yeah. A big, a yeah. Big, big, you know one wall sieges in a medieval free game oh my god that would be yeah for sure i mean that would be bad but yeah you're exactly i mean there's times where they kicked people out of castles because there's too many yeah exactly you know, so. oh another oh yeah general dead oh that's the woodland man a lot of uh elven leadership going down have they been slain this day? I mean, it's been a pretty bloody battle so far. Ooh, it does seem like we're getting a little bit of a sally out from the second wall now. 
We've got uh, Lazlin Blades charging out for breaching the wall. It's looking to engage the, the upholds of Isengard. Wow. Oh, yeah, over there in the secondary wall. Yeah, they've just like fully sallied out, trying to put some pressure on them, but immediately getting outflanked by yep. four reinforcements. Yeah, it's really risky to sally out for that reason exactly, but maybe they can fight their way out of this. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're just maybe a little bit bored. They just want to get their hands bloody and charge out. That or they saw an opportunity to get a vulnerable unit like crossbows or something, but I don't really see anything. It just looks like they just charged out and out are surrounded. Yeah, you can see that unit of Isengard infantry coming all the way around the yep. side. And that's they... going to go you know, flying into their back. They probably could have squeezed, you know, through there. They didn't have to go all the way around, but hey, it still works. Yeah, and maybe the reason behind this is just to try and keep more pressure off that Northern Bridge fight, you know, that's going on, because Isengard are sending a lot of their army. So if they send some out, they're at least tying up three units here to keep them a little bit busy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're seeing more soldiers being shifted over there as best as they can to reinforce. And uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, the the it, wall is is holding strong for all defenses. There's like one position with the Urukai Pikes up against Dwarven Halberds, and obviously they outrange them. So they're doing a pretty good job there. And I guess that's really the point they should really focus on. But again, there's just so many Dwarves and Reserves just being sent, sent in to reinforce. Yeah, I mean, this is still very close. If you look at the attackers, they still have a ton of reserves. So, and I think everyone's kind of used up their ammo. <laughs> yeah, there's like next to no ammunition left. At yeah, school. yeah. And look so at... Now, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, now it's just an absolute slog of a, a fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... It seems like... It's still early to tell, but it seems like the defenders are just gonna put it all right here they're not falling back yeah i mean there's still what 21 minutes left of this replay so you yeah. know they are they're gonna be fighting for every inch of the settlement and i love how the defending elves over here have been held back you see they're just sitting here near the bridge because of the two units of nobles just <laughs> intimidating them but yeah. in a way that's a smart play because i don't think these units would beat those nobles yeah, so, no, especially not in this position. Like, they're kind of almost encouraging them to come out so they can then be outflanked. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I yeah, think... No. Yeah, I think Isengard's going to seal the deal for this bridge battle. Indeed. I mean, there's a lot of infantry being committed there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time, I think, until the Erebor spear guard break or, or something. Oh, we do have a unit of Mansion Reclaimers, though. Um, who look absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. The top tier looking dwarven units it looks so so good the gold gold and white yeah they've been to Balrock on runescape and they've got their armor tinted <laughs> yeah. they didn't get absolutely amazing rest of the battlefield but if we go down again the i mean it doesn't Ooh. seem like can find a find a breach unless you've seen one. Oh, huge row! I think that was that was what you were oofing about. Right? Yeah, the wavering troops here. That is not good. The elves are surrounded, and again, this goes to show the quality in their units. There's only 95 of them, but they're 95 extremely well skilled, well drilled warriors. Yeah, I mean, it seems like this sally out was a bit of a bait. Like, they sallied out, it caused Isengard to go for a huge flank, and then the elves just counterflanked. And it's turned out really, really well for them. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. If they can route all of this, that's huge. Because, again, a lot of these Urukai units are still above half strength. Like, that unit just routed 100 Uruk still in the unit. Yep. Huge. Another one's about to route 128. And you've got units everywhere. There's another elven unit all the way over at the gate. <laughs> you go further along down that road. How the hell did they make it out there? I they're getting aggressive. I have no idea, but they I guess they're just trying to keep the uh the enemy from attacking the main lines. I I don't know. It's but it's working. It's working. Yeah, no, it really is, and they've uh done a very good job. They are now engaging the Vine Line Guard though, and that's one of the strongest units Dale do have to offer, so they've definitely met a bit more of staunch resistance rather than the Urukai infantry. Yeah or like a, a mid-tier infantry like these guys will not break they'll they'll fight to the bitter end yeah they're like the the old guard of 
of uh, the woodland realm, I suppose. Yeah, no, they are they're very, 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 very good indeed. I mean, it doesn't really seem like there is much left over back at the bridge fight. It seems like for the most part, there's what, one unit of Iron Guard left, and the dwarfs are surrounded by pikes and other units. And they can at least reform their line as best as they can. But yeah, I don't know. A Banzer Power Bot is definitely creeping back in. There's only 500 man advantage for the attackers now. And I, I think, honestly, they are running low on men. I don't think there's... Uh, I think they need to make a breach point now or never. Yeah, it's getting to that point where... <laughs> you know, we're, we're more than halfway through the battle. And they still have not found a weakness in this defense. But all it takes is just, you know one of these flanks a break and you could surround a ton of troops and turn this around so i i don't know what the defenders are thinking here i i definitely like their aggressiveness like look at they sent up some hall guardians near the main attack and now dale's gonna surround them yeah yeah but they're hall guardians you know these are elves and uh, they don't die easily they don't but why would you push them up to be surrounded? Like I, no, they, they just taste blood in the water and they just push through the Dalian infantry. Yeah, what is this? Now that's dangerous. Yeah, they're getting slaughtered. Because of that push, this isn't Rome 2 where you can push through units like that. I think they've tried to form a square maybe, um, and that formation brought them over here and uh, lost them a lot of soldiers. They're also exhausted as well, so they'll be fighting a lot worse than. The fresher infantry of Dale. Yeah. Not good. Not good whatsoever. More eyes and guard units are reinforcing. And I think it's going to be enough now. They've, they've committed a lot of soldiers here. And there's not really many elves left remaining, really. Supported there, again, by the Vineland Guard and other infantry. I think that's going to be enough to clear up this and, and give them really their first breach point, hopefully. Yeah, they, they, they've got to be so frustrated by these iron guards that just will not break. Because as soon as they kill them, they're going to have so many units, uh, you know, free to, to roam around and support other fronts. But these, these dwarves just don't give up. Okay, so we're a couple minutes into the uh, battle further on where we just were, and it does seem like the attackers have finally managed to break through in the center with some Uruk pikemen supported with some uh, Vineland watchmen and then mm. some Uruk infantry, but immediately met with more of the elven archers. So it's not like they've got an easier job now. They've just been able to break through, and I can only imagine that we're getting more reinforcements coming from further down the road because it does seem like the dwarves have also managed to clear out that far right-hand side. Under heavy casualties, obviously, but still, that's a, that's a lot more infantry they can now commit and, you know, kind of to the, the final stages of this fight. Yeah, it looks like the defenders are kind of setting up a new defense around the aqueduct, so it's it, they're not even, like, necessarily falling back. I think it's because, like you said, the dwarves won to the right. They're they're doing well in other places, so maybe they don't need to fall all the way back. They just kind of need to reform a little bit and wait for reinforcements. Yeah, let the enemy kind of come out and uh, yeah, just exploit that gap. Because yeah, now the elves are, are engaging at the bridge. They've engaged the no Nodrin nobles, surrounded them a little bit, not massively, but still managed to get around their flank a bit. And we also have that second unit reinforcing as well. Coming in to hit the uh, flanking force as best as they can on the bridge. Nice little charge into some pikemen near the aqueduct. The elven king riders. Yeah, and that's just going to be horrific. Cavalry in this mod is just like 12-12. They yep. tear anything away. If you are a thin line of infantry, you're getting slaughtered. If, yep. you're, if you're a universe moving, you're getting slaughtered. Like, cavalry is just insanely strong in this mod. But well, there's not many of them in, in said unit to be that strong as well, you know, like right. 30 of them in that, yeah, 40 of them in that unit. So comparing that to like a unit of 140 men, they're going to take casualties as they try and pull out. So it's really about using that ammunition, you know, ammunition being the horses really, really wisely. But oh, it's looking like some of them pikemen who have been uh, surrounded and attacked from the back are actually going to run around the center. And that could really start to even up the uh, the number count right now. Yeah, look, the balance of power is almost dead even. 
uh, between yeah. the two. This is looking worse and worse for the attackers. It's still not impossible for them to win, but it's it's looking worse and worse as time goes on. Yeah, they really need a big breakthrough. It's like now or never almost. They need to yeah. go all in. Um, and I, I, sorry, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel bad for the attackers because there was many moments in this battle where they seemed like they were seconds away from having a huge breakthrough, but the defenders would just rally and, and you know, reinforce. It's, they were so close. Yeah, I just don't think they have enough now. The uh, the dwarves even committed a unit of their halbers to defeat the soldiers coming off the wall now and kind of stop them in their tracks so they can't go and reinforce Ooh. the other weapons. That's good. Yeah, and again, halberds are good against anything, so just trying to engage them from the front is, is huge. That unit on fine land are both charging in and probably going to look to try and surround that dwarven unit, which is going to cut them down. Hitting them in the back. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's huge. He's going to give them something. And, and I mean, again, if they can get a, a high tier infantry like this into the back of that bridge attack, then they could quite easily clear it out, I think. But it's just getting the unit there in time. Yeah. Lost. I think they've got time. I Again, great job by the defending elves near the bridge. Just holding back. Because just their presence is keeping those nobles from being able to reinforce the other side against the dwarves. And, uh, you know, I think that's... Yeah. I, I think that's... I see that all the time where it's like, if you feel like you don't have enough strength to beat an enemy, just sit there and make them have to ha sit there as well. You know? Yeah, no, it's huge, especially because, as you say, if you don't have the strength to defeat it, there's no point you committing and just losing your soldiers anyway for no reason. Yeah. You know, they're going to die. It does seem like we do have a unit of Vineland Guard who have made it through. And I guess we're going to go try and go back and, and slave an older and noble general unit over there as best as they can. But yeah, I don't know. That balance power bar is not looking good. The, uh, the number advantage is now in favor. It's literally just went in favor of the defenders. They're able to surround and kill a lot of the soldiers by the aqueducts. Man. Was, uh, yeah. Shaping up to be a pretty a, a costly victory, but a victory nonetheless for the defenders. It, it's still... I still have hope. I'm rooting for the attackers just because they're kind of the underdog at this moment. But... They still, I mean, the balance of power is even. They can still do this. Yeah, I mean, there's always hope, you know. If only yeah. hope. And, and the bridge battle does, I mean, the, the, both these forces have been so stubborn for this bridge. Yeah, and, the bodies are just so piled up. Yeah, and it looks like the attackers are going to finally take the bridge. Dwarves are breaking. Look at, oh, the general's calling it quits. He's like, I'm getting out of here. Oh! Can I get hit on the side? I think he did manage to form a square just before that, so... That'll give him a lot of protection. And just bide him as much time as he needs until the, uh, the reinforcing dwarfs arrive. Yeah, but we also have some reinforcement. Uh, Vineland guards and Urukai coming in. And the dwarves know. are breaking and at the bridge Ooh, yeah that's gonna open up that point but again if you look back at the aqueducts there's there's nothing left now they've really pushed through all the attackers are just trying to rush through that breach point to try and i guess kind of combine their forces into one yeah stand. i mean that's what that's what i would do at this point just consolidate consolidate the forces and and hope for the best but yeah look at this move here the dwarven warriors are like nah -uh -uh. you're not regrouping yeah, that was absolutely huge. Stopping that regroup was massive because yeah. I think, I think when in the battle, it's not about killing your opponents, it's about routing them. Right. So keep stopping them from being able to like join up into one big blob and that allows you to really outflank your opponents. And uh, yeah, just hold, holding them there will really divide the enemy as best they can. And I still outflank over by the bridge as well, surrounding the unit of Iron Guard from both sides. Isn't a bad play either. It's going to give them a good advantage. Again, just oh, yeah. the route is huge. Yeah. And those dwarves are still breaking. They're still wavering, but yet still fighting is at the, the bridge. Is alive? I think he is, right? Uh, yeah, yeah he is. All right. Yeah, that's Dang. Big. Is he, is he? Yeah, oh, he's, he's, he's Tomb oh, Wardens. Yeah. Yeah, coming up. And we've also got some crossbows who have mounted the walls now. Still have ammunition left. 
Oh yeah, look oh my god, that might be devastating. That's a lot of this, kills that can be This now. could be the nail in the coffin right here. This could be the final punch that, that takes out the attackers. Yeah, and the Univine Guard has not lost a man yet. They're surrounded, they just lost a right there. Oh yeah. The Vineland Guards, they're dropping so quick to these crossbows. Yeah, I think that's gonna be uh, GG, honestly. Yeah, I mean, again, like holding on to your archers to the to the last stages of the game, can, it, it leads to this, you know? This yeah, we already got 40 kills. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it definitely does start to rack up. It's only 40 kills, but also it's quality kills. This is the Vineland Guard, like 40 of them. That's huge. Yeah, and again, they're reducing my number, and you can see that morale starting to drop down on the Urukai, who are also in that blob. And the, the unit of uh, no Nodrin Nobles as well in that square formation, able to fight off many of the enemy units. Yeah. And even breaking yep. units. Yep. Yeah, it's over. It's GG. What an epic stand. Yeah, the balance of, balance of power is now in favor of the defenders. Hashtag attackers never win. Okay, well, here's here's a question. So, what do you think the attackers could do? What what do you think they should have done to win this battle? I don't know. This is a hard settlement. I don't think I've ever seen the attackers win on this settlement. It's it's a really difficult one to uh, to attack. I I guess put more pressure on that far left hand side, uh, with place very completely ignored, and I guess probably commit less to the beach assault. I I think maybe would have been a good idea, and. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a hard one because the defenders have such a good advantage on this map, I think, because it's a really, obviously, fortified map. I think just committing to that extreme, like, right-hand side where the dwarves were, breaching through that point, that opens up a lot of avenues where you can start threatening the, the, the furthest rear kind of, uh, I guess, little road. But you can go all the way back and then you can go into the center. So yeah. that way you're pressing kind of capturing the, the inner city, meaning that the defenders have to leave stuff back. And then you can also start to outflank kind of down the main road and, and you know kind of really open up your avenues and also get archers up there to fire down so basically just stretching out the defenders yeah as best yeah. as you can because yeah i think they committed a lot and even though that bridge fight was good it kind of played in favor of the defenders because they don't have as many units as the attackers so yeah they're basically allowing the attackers to throw five, six units against two or three of theirs on that bridge, and obviously that paper, you know, that's, that's huge for them. Yeah, if I was the attacking elves, I would have just focused on like if you're attacking the beach, I would have focused just one side, you know, because he kind of split his forces and attacked the bridge and the other side. I just would have stayed at one and just break through. I would have gone not the bridge side. I would have gone the other way and try to get through there to force you know defenders to fall back. But, yeah, and maybe even just delay your assault as well. And yeah. Your eyes are already pushing down that kind of route they came down towards the end of the battle. Yeah. You know, then they're attacking from that side. You're pushing your entire army over on the other side by the lighthouse. And uh, all of a sudden, the, uh, the, attack, the defenders don't have enough men to guard everything. Yeah, for sure. And if I was the attackers, I would have only used my archers to kill halberds and pikes. That's, that's it. Because I think... Yeah, I feel like the Halberds almost single-handedly won this battle. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see it at the uh, battle results when we look at the kills. Uh, or yeah. You can't see kills in Attila, can you? Uh, yeah, no, you, yeah, you oh, can. Oh, you can? You can, okay. Kills, but I think we're ready just to triple speed the rest of the battle now. I don't think there's going to be anything too crazy. Yeah, it's it's over. Yeah, I'm going to click triple speed now and... Uh, yeah, we'll just see the last little stand. But yeah, you can see. So you can't see, I think, the total kills of the armies and the players, but you can see the kills on the units, which is, uh, yeah, which I guess is... Okay. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. And you can um, kind of see now, like, look at Erebor Halberdiers, 238 kills. Oh, oh, my God. 483 at the unit in the breach. 483, and they've lost, like, 40 men. They've still got <laughs> a decent chunk left in their unit. Ooh. God damn. Yeah, that is scary. And it's not even like they're like an ultra elite unit either, the, the Dwarven Halberds, you know? Like they're, they're heavily armored, but they're not like yeah. the highest tier. They're just a train tier. So it's like tier three, tier, uh, yeah, tier two, tier three. They're not like the elite tier. 
And there you go. Pyrrhic victory with defenders claiming that one. And in, in, I'd say a pretty decisive kind of victory towards the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was just a solid defense. They just did not let up. They didn't give the attackers any opportunity to break through. And because of that, um, yeah, they just the attackers couldn't get it done. Yeah, I mean, look at the Halberds. Copper dances, Halberds, 400 kills. Oof. Yeah, a bunch yeah, of Hall Guardians. Things. One almost got 500 kills. Kind of. Yeah. That is uh, pretty crazy. It's always so hard to tell as well, though, with kills. Like, it really depends on what faction, because, you know, yeah. the Mordor have 200 man units, whereas the Elves have 85. So kills aren't always a great indicator of, like, how well a unit did, but That's 500 true. kills is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Because, yeah, they could have been charged by archers that didn't have any ammo or something, but... Yeah, exactly. But I think that's going to do it for today's battle. Make sure you go over and check out Apollo's channel if you haven't already. We're also going to do a battle replay over on his channel. So make sure you go check out for some more action. And obviously, if you want to see us do more of these battles in the future, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I will see you guys next time.